In this video, we'll learn how to pass parameters for function evaluations in the context of a numerical method implementation in MATLAB. After studying this video, you should be able to use the Verargon data structure to allow your function M files to accept parameters that may be needed for function evaluations. Also, you should be able to understand how to pass parameters to built-in MATLAB functions. Some, not all, accept parameters. And we'll talk about how they do that, same way that we're going to do it. So, why do we want to do this? Well, we want to write function M files to be as general as possible, just like we were talking about before, so they can be reused for a variety of applications. And we know most mathematical models include one or more parameters. So the functions we write to work with these models should have a convenient and efficient way to handle parameters. Recall that we've, the numerical methods that we're implementing are usually dealing with the independent and dependent variables. And the parameters are just something that need to come along for the ride. We also use this to continue to develop a better understanding of how MATLAB's built-in functions work with parameters and continue developing our programming skill. And let's look at this in the context of an example. So recall from week two, we did a parametric analysis with bisection of this contaminant model for the concentrations of some contaminants in a lake. And we generated a graph that showed how long it took to reach a standard for different values of KB. And we saw that as KB increased, we had a graph that looked like this. And eventually, KB had no effect because the uh, decay rate was dominated by KA. And if you go back and look at the M file we used for that example, you can find this portion where we defined the function and sent it to the bisect basic function we wrote to solve it for each case of KB. And what we did here is we had to, in line 24, we had to redefine our anonymous function for every value of KB. So what we're doing here is redefining the anonymous function there with our independent variable T for each new value of KB before we send it then to the bisection file. And all of the parameters, A naught, KA, B naught, P standard, and KB, the one that we're varying, are hardwired into that function definition. And a couple disadvantages. The main disadvantage is that redefining that function in the workspace in MATLAB, because this is happening in the MATLAB workspace. Redefining that is computationally inefficient. Every single time we do that, we have to delete the old memory location for that function and create a new memory location. And we are always going to be interested in computational efficiency when we're implementing numerical methods. As we move further in the class, we'll start to get a taste of this as certain numerical algorithms actually take noticeable time to implement on the computer. And we'll talk more that, about that as we go forward. But the key thing to know now is we want to be as efficient as possible. Our root finding algorithm here might be in the context of a much larger simulation. And every little bit counts to make that an efficient computation. So let's look at some tools and approach that MATLAB offers that allow us to take a slightly more efficient approach to this problem. So here is a modified code using varargin to pass parameters. If you recall from the video on function default, varargin is what allows us to have variable number of inputs to a function. And we used that last time to allow us to have variable number of inputs and mostly looked at the cases where we have less than 
the needed inputs to run the function and just assigned optional uh, or assigned default values to some inputs we called optional. Well, the other thing that happens is you can have more inputs than the ones you explicitly call out in the input list. And Vera again is also useful for that and we can use that, take advantage of that to pass parameters to the function. And this is how it works. So here I've modified the contaminant model and what you'll see, that contaminant model code, is I've changed here in line 18 where I've included both KA and KB as variables in the input list in the function definition. And the reason I've done that is because presumably we've been looking at KB, but presumably those might be two different parameters that we might want to look at as we analyze this model. And so that's the first change. The next change you'll see is where we call the bisection method and I've got a new function name here bisect param I'll talk more about that in a minute and what I've got is the same things in the same function in the initial bracket and then two placeholders those empty brackets we have to use those those are placeholders for ES and max it that we talked about last time um, because we're going to use the defaults for those and then once we've done that we've now passed the number of explicit variables in the input list for bisect param. So if we look down here, here's the function call for bisect param and we have one, two, three, four, five variables explicitly identified in the input list and then there's the varar again again. So we have one, two, three, four, five variables and then we get additional inputs. Now these additional inputs here those are just going to dump right into var r again when that function is called and var r again is actually a data structure that MATLAB offers to hold a variable number of values and it's actually called a cell array and getting into specific types of data structures is a little bit beyond the scope of this class but you, I think you can still understand how var argin works so basically what happens is no matter how many values here in this case we had two parameters we had two parameters up here so I'm passing two additional parameters I'm leaving ka That'll go to KA as 1, and KB is going to change each time through the for loop here. The other change we need to make inside the bisection function is every time we evaluate the function now, that's going to expect this function that we called here, right? That's going to expect three inputs in order to evaluate. And to get those three inputs, we're again going to use varar again. So what happens is every time we do a function evaluation, and here's a function evaluation where we did our test case for the bisection in line 31, we're going to do, there's our first input, which is our independent variable XL, and then we'll just use varar again, and that collects all of those parameters, both KA and KB, and brings those down so that we have one and then two and three inputs going together with that var argin. An important note of var argin here, that is a curly bracket colon curly bracket. And what that means is how many of the variables in var argin are we going to use? Just like the syntax before with the colon operator, that means all of them. So all of the variables that dumped into var argin, which in this case are 1.0 and k, the current value of kb, we're going to use all of them every time we evaluate that function. So when we evaluate it again here for a different value of x, again, there's var argin. And that's basically how you do it. And uh, so let's summarize 
how to do this. It's a little bit complex, but it's also a really powerful programming technique. So the keys to passing parameters with varar again are as follows. The independent variables in the model that you're using, whatever mathematical model it is, they must be the first in the input list defined when you define that model definition. So when we defined the function fun, t has to be first in order for this to work because we're going to use that those first values um, when we evaluate that function like we did over here there's that first value is the independent variable we're working with in our numerical algorithm then we have our parameters the other thing that's important is that the parameters must be passed to the numerical method function in the same order as they are listed in the original original model definition and again that's just being consistent with the idea that inputs pass to fun input values pass to functions and pass between workspaces in MATLAB according to position so again we have to have KA and KB there MATLAB has no way of knowing which one goes first uh, except for being consistent with which one goes first the other thing we did there is to use empty brackets as placeholders to bypass those optional function inputs so that the parameter inputs start at the same position in this case it was the sixth position in this case the same position that Varar again holds in the numerical method function definition statement okay and then uh, lastly when writing a function that accepts parameters we need to be sure to include var again again with curly brackets and a colon in all of our function evaluations that occur inside that numerical method function and so here's again an example of that in that function evaluation so try this out uh, this will make your functions much more generally applicable as we move through the course and easier to reuse here and in other places.